we used to dream about flying beyond our stars, discovering what lies on the other end of our scopes, to reach beyond our horizon. Before we could, human nature caught up to us. So when we stared into the abyss, the old light from stars long extinguished, we wondered if others like us were out there. Little did we know that within that same light from long ago, deep within the cosmos, there was. What we didn't realize is that war, greed, corruption, and violence aren't unique to us. It's our heritage, our history, our story. Out there, Andromeda used to be our home. So when we gaze at the old lights of our war-torn past, of our future. We dream of one day changing history. Maybe we still can. What's cracking everyone? Welcome to twitch.tv slash opnoobsonline, the official Twitch channel for the overpower news that you'll find at opnoobs.com. Shane unfortunately is not with us tonight, he could not make it, so sadly, unfortunately for you all, I will be your host. If you can't understand what I'm saying, that's normal, I don't really speak English. And I am accompanied by my good friends and colleagues, my partners in crime, that's Ray, our editor-in-chief. Um, what's up, Ray? How you doing, man? Ah, your microphone's muted. Your hair is great, but your microphone's Thank muted. Thank you. How is everyone tonight? Good to be here. Thank you, friend. Doing good. Thanks, Ray. And of course, Ariana Moon. Ariana, who most of you have come to know already um, on many, many podcasts. And now she's finally starting to get her feet wet and bringing some devs into the session to talk about the games that we play. I'm also... How you doing, Ariana? Doing good? <laughs> Great. Excited to be here, as always. Thanks, Ariana. Thanks for making it. I'm accompanied, we're accompanied, most importantly, by uh, the, the the shining star of the day. Uh, I, I think it's appropriate to say. Mike Dominguez. Mike, uh, the developer for Grey Wolf, uh, Grey Wolf Entertainment. Uh, Dawn of Andromeda is the game that we'll be covering today. You'll find footage on the bottom right side. You've got Lori backstage handling the giveaways. The giveaways are going to be spelled out to you through the little trailer at the bottom left side of the screen. But let me, let me not be scattered and go right back to the developer. Mike, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us. You're launching your game tomorrow. It's an exciting time. Uh, it's an exciting time for you and the studio. How are you doing? Hello. Are you How's everyone going? Are you stressed? Are you, are you feeling the sweat? Um, how, long have yes. you, how long have you guys been working on this? And how long have you, have you guys been working toward tomorrow? And maybe two years, two years and a half, <laughs> around that time. Two years, yeah, that's, but, a, that's a big number. And how many, how many guys on the studio? How many guys on the only team? Three. Only three. So there's three of you. So exactly. two years work, uh, done by three. Um, that's, that's exciting. What would you say, if you had to say anything before you release, what would it be? Um, well... Let's hope it goes well. <laughs> <laughs> and what would be going well for you? What do you anticipate? Well, first, having a nice, re a nice reception, of course. It's always, it's always great. And really hoping people like what we've done. There's a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of hours put into this. 
So, if at the end of the day no one likes it, it's, it's I, I wouldn't say it's a waste of time, of course, but it's just not as yeah as pleasant. Well, I've played the game myself quite a bit and uh, I enjoyed it. It's definitely a dense game. It's a game that's going to take all your brain cells um, at work and you're going to have to multitask. Uh, something that at the workplace you don't find often, right, Ray? Um, <laughs> Ray's got a, got a set of fantastic questions put together by the great John Fentiman. Thank you, John Fentiman. Hats off. Or a compliance officer, don't ask. Um, he's put together those great questions, looking looking at the studio, looking at the game. And uh, Ray, if you've got him in front of you, I say we go right on and you can start with question number one. I do have him in front of me. Oh, uh, Mike, <laughs> thanks for joining us. I did want to say before we jumped into the questions, though, that Fred, you'd asked Mike what success looks like to him. And he didn't say the color, picking out the color of my Ferrari, which is something that you would have said, Fred, <laughs> yes, personally. I, would I know you, you, would have, you would have said that. Or All Lamborghini, about, I'm still not set. I'm still not nice, decided. A nice reception. He wants it to be received well critically by his peers in the industry, A. Which is really, B, which is really which is, in between him and the Ferrari. Which is in between him and the Ferrari, <laughs> you're right. It's a subtle way. You can't put to. the cart before the horse. Right, that's true. I think a first note. <laughs> yes, of course. And then he says he hopes that people will like what we've done. Otherwise, maybe the effort wasn't worth it, right? So I can tell Mike, coming from a position of having evaluated hundreds of games now, probably re 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 read the evaluations of hundreds of games, that that's a, a very good trait to have and very probably a defining quality for for your game, I hope, for your title, I hope, releasing tomorrow, correct? Yeah. Possibly. You're so nervous, Mike. It's already over. You, you've done everything you can do. <laughs> it's now more it's that I'm relax. sleepy than nervous. Uh, because what time is it where you are? Uh, almost 1 a.m. Oh, dobro utro. <laughs> dobre utre. Well, let's jump right into the questions, Mike. That way you can get straight to bed. The first question we've got here is, is a good question. I'd like to get your insight, having spent two years balancing this game. How does Dawn of Andromeda balance 4X gameplay and all of that entails with strategy without, without overburdening the player with micromanagement? So how do you still have fun but challenge yourself, I guess? So a really lightweight question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really interesting question. Um... Well, basically, the, the original idea, vision for the game was to make a, a faster pace for X game. Something that played like a traditional RTS, like, say, Age of Empires or uh, StarCraft, for example. But at the same time, having the depth of, of Forex games and use certain, certain systems like um, diplomacy, colony management. And because of how fast paced the game is and everything is real time, including combat. Uh, basically, we had to streamline certain systems. So right. just to keep the, the game flowing nicely and like you said, prevent overburdening the player with micromanagement. And because especially at late game, it becomes a big problem in certain games. So There's I imagine, something... sorry? sorry, please. <laughs> um, there's some, some. There's a lot of of other forex games too that already have heavy micromanagement, and people like that. It, it's perfectly fine. Absolutely. But we we had to also differentiate ourselves in some way, so that's another way we went. Did you during the development process? Because you said that there wasn't a specific uh, course that was charted. Did you bump into the things during user acceptance testing? You, you've got some get, some friends over to play the game, and you're like, okay, that part doesn't really work, and you had to cut it. Did everything seem to kind of just flow together? You had great chemistry with your fellow developers, or I mean, how did surely you had to make some tough calls? Yeah, of course. I, I the 
or originally the idea was already to to go really streamlined because um, because of how fast paced the game is, there really wasn't a lot of margin to add super complex systems and lots of micromanagement. So, so that was already. What's okay. the average length of a of a game? I, 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 if I can interrupt, I like the yeah, fact sure. that, sure. that Mike doesn't think his game is super complex. <laughs> because <laughs> I felt like the game because was super complex. Butt. It kicked it my butt. Both of your butts. <laughs> so I don't know like what dimension yeah. he lives in and what he's got planned. He, if he had a thirty million dollar budget, but I probably don't want to be there. <laughs> Would you say, Mike, that it's a hard game, or that it, that it has a steep learning curve, perhaps? Honestly, I don't think so, at least as far as Forex games go. You guys are just noobs, OP noobs. I, <laughs> no, but in my own defense, it's true. I am a, an hour, I had it down. I, are, just, are you, I are you any good, good at Forex games, Oriana? Like, are you any hmm? good at are you any good at Forex games? Because I'm not. I'm you know I'm not that great, but I enjoy them. I enjoy them too. Not so much because I want to focus on this. Then this comes up and everything pops up, but uh, it, it was enjoyable. And in an hour's time, I figured out I knew what I had to do. It was my skill in it that was lacking. <laughs> yes, yes, agreed. Carry on, Ray. Sorry to so, interrupt. Well, that's no, that's a great point when you're talking about skill, Ariana. And then Mike is is sitting here very coolly, if not tired, saying, "Oh, it's not that hard." So, Mike, I imagine because you spent two years building a forex game that you grew up on forex games or that you're very familiar with forex games what other games i don't want to give any names what comes to mind when you think of inspirations for this title yes without naming names no no you do i'm not gonna no, I'm thank not you gonna, i think okay. i think you can name names, <laughs> name saying, names i didn't want to put any names in your head to to bias you <laughs> well there was a lot of of different inspirations i think we, the base basically we we started with the the kind of games I spent lots of afternoons playing when I was when I was a kid like Age of Empires and Me such. Me too. Me too. And Age of Empires. So, but I also that. love forex games, so I basically wanted to sort of build a middle ground between those two. So I think Sins of a Solar Empire is is a game a lot of people have compa compared us with. And it's a pretty accurate compar comparison. Um, I al also one of the first games I played, uh, first forex games I played was Galaxy Civilization Two, I think. And so it it was basically my first uh, my first step in this big complex world of forex games. So there's always some kind of inspiration we get even if we don't really notice it is this your first forex game uh the first i've made yeah uh, no no i worked previously on lords of the black sun in my previous company okay yeah because i can tell i mean you can tell like you've got experience in the genre you and i and that comes right oriana like that really comes across the moment you dive in you're like this is this is built by a dev team that's done this before um, yes, fans of the uh, genre definitely. They know what they're doing. Yeah, it's not amateurish at all. Thanks. Actually, it's super polished. Uh, it's, the game looks beautiful. Everything from the intro, the menu screen to when you dive into the game looks beautiful. So hats off on that. The graphics and everything, it, it really comes off as impressive. Uh, I'm not surprised. You know, Iceberg uh, Interactive, your publisher, picks up great games. Uh, they're careful on the games that they tend to publish. Um, so when they recommended that we talk to you guys, I, I jumped on the opportunity. But yeah, right. Next question: If we want to get, if we want to get Mike to bed at some to bed. some fashionable <laughs> time. There's time. So what? This is every develop. When you think about video games, you think about a certain some vistas, particular vistas in mind, and space is probably right up there at the top with the rest of them. <laughs> so why? Did you? What was your reason for picking space? Knowing that it's a very popular, uh, very frequently chosen uh, locale or setting uh, for for many games, I could name half a dozen off the top of my head. Why? What? Yeah. What drew you to space? Super competitive. Super competitive. Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, I think part of the reason is that space is, is so has so much potential to do lots of different things and different genres too. Uh, you, there's also potential to, to tell really interesting stories and create interesting gameplay systems because so much of space, at least from what we know, we, we don't really know much. So there's a lot of uh, blank space, let's say, to make up things and even use uh, certain modern situations. Uh, and it all fits because then again, we really don't know what's up there. So, so did you study space in school before? Or you're very interested in space in general. <laughs> I'm wondering, because I'm looking at the footage here and when you say, oh, it's done by people who know the genre, it's also done by people who appreciate, you know, the, the celestial bodies up there too. You know, it's a big scale full of emptiness and vacuum. You just, do you, do you grow up with space posters as a kid? I don't know. It's, it's, it's also about the alien races and the factions and the true. way that he has history of all the alien ish. And I love that. So did you sit down and write all those characters out? The factions and the different groups that come up with yeah. the alien races? Uh, we, we made this together we, with the rest of the team. We basically just stopped working, just sit in a room and okay, let's let's write a story for these guys. We already had the um, the visual the visual part of of each race, so it, it was already sort of of uh, of a base we could, we could base ourselves on, and from then we just start adding ideas and scratching some and adding more. And it basically went that way. Did you start out? thinking you would go into space and ended up in space or did you start out with did you find yourself in space out of nowhere and suddenly realize oh yeah well we should do it we should set it in space because that, to, to ariana's point it it certainly influenced the narrative a lot uh, not only the physics and the mechanics of the game uh, sorry I, I i didn't understand the question i'm wondering if you had started out with space specifically in mind and built around oh. that, or if you started out with a different feature of the game and ended up in space and saying, oh, I guess it makes sense in space. Yeah, um, the, the original idea was already made with space in mind, but we had some, some really sh short term, short, um, I can't find the word. Basically, we, we had these ideas to see how it would work with other settings. And basically no other setting could work oh, as well cool. as space. Cool. That does it does open fun. up for a lot of exploration and let your imagination go. You're not exactly, set yeah. in one specific world. Exactly. There's this old blackness, the unknown. That's not the kind of thing we can do easily with, say, fantasy or a modern setting. I think at the end of the day, space is a great commercial tool. I mean, there's, yeah, sure. It's your, I mean, Ray, you're correct to say that there is a ton of space games. And so when a developer dives into that universe, for lack of a better term, you, you're really competing against a pool of, you know, some really great games out there too, even in terms right. of 4X. So it's, you know, it's a challenge, but at the same time and by the same token, I would argue that space immediately on Steam especially attracts the attention of players. Ooh, a space game that gets us in. Because there's something, right? Like we had this conversation just a couple of days ago about is, is gaming something to something people used to evade? Um, I, I'm, I tend to be a believer that it is. Um, some people might contest that. Some people on our team whose names shall, shall remain untold. Um, but... <laughs> But space, I mean, space is the, the ultimate kind of evasion. Get it's, out of this world. Get out of this world. And it's literally. very, it's very topical. We're in this, we're on the cusp of the space age, you know, with interplanetary travel in yeah. the very near future. So it's very uh, relevant. So it, it is definitely, yes, it's very relevant. Exactly. It's not like, because you can also escape to go to medieval times, but that yeah, some, that's... People, some people are... <laughs> turned off by that because yeah. they're like i'm not a geek i'm not a oh i don't want to do that even if it is fun but it's science anyway. 
It's also the, it's also Mike Mike. It's also the right time to ask this question, and I was debating whether or not I wanted to ask it on the stream, but I think I will. Um, your your game has the name Andromeda, like slapped mm. into it. Uh, needless True. to say, Mass Effect Andromeda came out just a couple months ago. Coincidence? I I uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 a huge game. Um, is it a coincidence? Um, did you guys expect it? Um, how can, is that, does, does that have anything to do with EA's release? No, actually, when we started, Wait, sorry. I think the microphone. You, you really upset him. Fred. <laughs> I think I'm out of here. <laughs> this yeah. interview is BS. <laughs> agree to this. <laughs> um. Uh, as I was saying, um, when we started making the game, uh, Andromeda, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda wasn't an announced yet. But we, we already wanted to do something with a popular galaxy, one that, we, we, that no game had used before. So, we had this idea and suddenly Mass Effect Andromeda is announced. Uh, so, it wasn't a very pleasant surprise. And then, um, Originally, we, we wanted to release like a year before. That failed. Yeah. But we had no idea when Mass Effect Andromeda would release. So we just kept doing our thing and basically hope they didn't release too close to each other because <laughs> some could cause some Actually, it's not a bad marketing idea. Get your name say. out there. People get to see you. They find you. When I was talking yeah. about the game, people are like, you talking about Yes. I'm like, no, this is a new game entirely. Exactly. I don't think it. I don't. I don't think it hurts you. I think it helps you, Mike. Right. Especially considering the reception of Mass Effect and how contentious it was. I think <laughs> people will be relieved to see a game called Andromeda that doesn't really piss them that off. That isn't so, Mass Effect. <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> All right. Carry on, but right? back to the mechanics of the game. Uh, back to the development of the game, Mike, and the two years that you and your team spent. Were the three of you guys full time, or did you have day jobs? You did that on the side. No, no, we worked full time on this. Oh, excellent! So during those two years, you probably had plenty of time to, <laughs> to balance it. But the next question does address that. Uh, this past weekend, Fred and I went sailing. It was great on our yacht. It was wonderful. And I'll tell you something, Mike. If you turn the rudder just a little bit, in about thirty minutes, you're going to be in a totally different place. So when you've got be like, in a world of shit. You're gonna be in a world of shit. <laughs> but it's the small it's sort of like a butterfly effect. It's the small changes up front that can really magnify and compound. How do you balance how do you balance a, a Forex game in general? It doesn't even need to be specific, given that you've worked on these titles before. There's so many moving parts. How do you identify, oh, that's the reason why this one isn't working? I mean oh. the there's a lot of trial and error. It's basically that we try a new system, doesn't work, or it needs some some more depth or some more, uh, or m maybe even taken out completely. And we basically do that for four years. Yeah, there's some games that take four or five years to make. That's probably because of that. Sometimes we, you basically start working on certain systems for like one or two years, and then you have to scratch them completely. Thankfully, oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't that's, exactly our case, but there think, was a lot uh, of I, I think, back and forth. Yeah, I think that's the story of any great endeavor, uh, honestly. I mean, you don't know how many yeah. stuff we've crashed uh, after systems. working, like, yeah, after working months, if not, yeah, if not a year on it, and I, we scraped everything. Um, that's that's any great endeavor, so I, f I, f I feel your pain on this. Mike, <laughs> how long have you been in the video game industry as a developer or just in the industry um, i think in maybe four years five five maybe five. because that's something that you learn in your career in whatever industry as fred had mentioned and as you had mentioned you don't take it personally because you can work on something for half of a year or a year and something <coughs> else comes out that necessitates you abandoning that you can't cling to it you can't you know you have to just go with what's best for the game or what's best for the project so that can be painful did you guys exactly. between the three of you just have a majority vote every time 
Or did well, you always I, know? I, I'm the lead designer, so usually I take most design-based decisions, but um, the rest of the team tends to try a new build and say, okay, these, uh, I don't like this part of the game, or let's say this quest or this event or something, I, I don't like it, it doesn't work. So it's, we all, we, you always need different um, different eyes on the project, basically, because if I keep staring at the same picture for a long time, I won't see anything wrong with it. But so is, go ahead, sorry. No, I was basically finished. Yeah, but so is, so is, to, is tomorrow's release pretty much because you've had that date set, set for a while and you didn't want to delay it anymore? Or is it really, do you feel like the game has found that perfect balance? Are you happy with where the game is today? Yeah, we, we, we didn't exactly decide on a, on a release date until maybe one month or something ago. Uh, we were lucky enough to, to have lots of good feedback on, on early access and it really helped shape the game. And how long was the title? Yet, so, so quickly. Let me let me uh, just close off my half hour here. I'll turn it over to you, Ariana. Um, a, thank you very much, Mike. I, no problem. The, the last thank question you. is a perfect segue. Um, just in a in a in a minute or two, what advice would you give someone who is trying to develop their first game? Well, uh, not that I'm expert or anything but <laughs> you'd be like I'll tell say, you after tomorrow <laughs> we'll see how yeah. that goes tomorrow maybe I'll have a different opinion um, I think maybe the most important thing is to make sure to try to learn from other people's mistakes yes. especially when you start out because you won't you will make a lot of mistakes but by then it's too late so if you can try to to learn from someone else's mistake it's perfect they get absolutely. the pain, you get to learn. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Mike, it's been I had a pleasure. A, I, I had a great, uh, when I was in college, I was studying jazz and I had a great teacher who used to, who used to play the, the piano for Miles Davis. And, um, and he told me himself, um, the, the secret to music and the secret to anything is you learn all the rules, like a good pupil, and then you break them all. But you can't break the rules before you learn the rules. Um, yes. And that's exactly what you said. It's, you know, you go and study what's being done out there, mimic it, and once you mimic it, uh, make it your own. Exactly, yeah. That's basically it. Yeah. Just crash and then learn. Fail fast. It's the only way. Yeah. <laughs> Ariana, uh, you're, you're done, Ray? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, so we're going oh, to move to the... A lot of info there, Ray. We're going to move yep, to the yep. Q&A section that Lori, who's handling the chat right now, has kindly taken the time to put together. She's gone on the Steam forums of, uh, of Dawn of Andromeda, and she's looked at some of the community feedback, uh, both positive and maybe even negative. And she picked up what she thought were good questions or good feedback from the community. And Ariana's got the question sample right here. And Ariana, I'm going to pass you the mic and the time to shine is yours. Ah, well, actually, it's Mike's time because it's his game and it's pretty cool. Nice. So, I want to tell you, I put in several hours. It was really fun playing. It was a good challenge. And, um, but what I want to do is play with my friends. Is there going to be a multiplayer option? And I'm curious if you and your three partner, you and your two partners uh, wanted to ever play together in a multiplayer fashion. Uh, we don't have multiplayer plan. For, uh, the game was basically designed from, from the ground up to be single player only. But who knows in the future, maybe diff a different free update or DLC. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. So, at least as a single player, we can get experience in the suck game. Suck it up, Ariana. <laughs> yeah, no. Suck it up. You'll stay at it all. That's so bad. What I was need that, to uh, with what was that? factions or something. What was that awful flop that uh, No Man's Sky, right? You could just oh. tell everyone it will be multiplayer. Oh, yeah, you should have gone with that, Mike. Your secret safe with us. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it will be. I never said that. Maybe. <laughs> The game itself is huge. There was a lot to do, a lot of micromanagement. I really enjoyed it. So I felt like the map side was large. There were eight uh, alien races, and you had multiple factions or your know, pirates that come in. But I'm wondering if you've got any plans for any further uh, faction sizes, maybe a map size of 20 or more? 
I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, I think okay. you broke up just a little bit, Ariana. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm now. saying that the... Uh, I'll try to make that a little shorter this time around. The map size is pretty good size. You have eight alien races. And then you have some factions that you encounter that are minor. Um, they're the pirates, basically. Um, I was yes. wondering if you were going to expand on that to have more, maybe more races, larger factions um, in the game later on. I'm sorry. I no, still, it's okay. I, I got it. Basically, part. she's talking about the factions your, and the races. Yeah, plans, you're breaking up a little bit, Ariana. Yeah, are you, DLC, yeah, are well, are you gonna bring more factions? Are you gonna bring more races? That's the word. Basically, basically, that's the word and the lore expand upon what you've already built, or is this a finished product? You get what you paid for. Oh, right. okay. Um. <laughs> Thanks for translating my southern accent there. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's your yeah. microphone somehow is is uh, clipping a little bit, Ariana. So it's hard to understand you. Um, we 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 are planning on doing the DLC at some point. Uh, for now, the the plan was really to get the this game out and be as solid as possible. Make sure the eight races are are solid. They have a solid background, a so, solid. Uh, lore, and then we'll expand on, on the future. Great. I'm assuming that will also mean you'll have larger fleet sizes, maybe some bigger ships that we can build. I know the qu question ton came in how you can build your ship, how much weapons and things that you can put on your ship. So I know right now the game and then with your are you catching yeah, no, that yeah, mic? Yeah, because I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm not catching right, you. Like, yeah, something with the microphone. I'm so sorry. No, that's no, okay. No, take your that's time. Take your time. That's no big try. deal. We'll try and fix it. So, Mike, did you and the boys go out to... Are you? Did you go out to celebrate pre-launch party? Have a nice dinner? Not yet, not yet. Mike, Mike. You Tomorrow, have a family, Mike? Sorry? Do you have a family? Yes, of course. And oh, where, where are you located, by the way? Oh, I mean, if you mean... Uh, Do you still married, have a family? <laughs> Do you still have a family? <laughs> this is the question. You've been coding for two years. <laughs> if, if you're asking if I'm married or uh, have kids, no, thankfully. Otherwise, I, I probably will be able to spend so much time working on this. Smart man, smart man. Yes. Ariana, how's the mic looking? I am hoping it is better. Right, it sounds it's a little better. Just a little better. Try that question again. Okay. The question was regarding the fleet size in the ship. Is that good? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can build ships, and they have different sizes, of course, with tonnage. That's how the ships work. And you can add weapons or defense to it. So the question okay. is, will you have ships that you can expand? to have larger fleet so I could have planet destroyers basically uh, yeah you can already have a, there's already a module in the game that you can blow up planets with it sort of a Death Star like ability but but yeah we, we're planning on expanding on that as well I think that's something a lot of people requested so I have a quick question, Mike. I know you can build ships, but can you build a wall? I a think wall? that's what Americans <laughs> want to know. You and can, can you build it? Space. Can you build it quickly? Okay. Depends on who's paying. In less than six months, Mike. You make the alien factions pay, Mike. You make them pay for it. Of course. In less than six months. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ariana. Um, I think okay. you've got a couple more. Leading with that, uh, the planetary question is, will you have planetary weapons? I think there's some already in the game where you can defend your base or your space station. So do you have any expansion plans on that where we can fire longer distances before the enemy gets to it? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, we haven't really exactly planned exactly what we're do going to do with DLC because the vast majority, if not everything we wanted to, to add, is already in the game. 
That's but there's definitely some some room to to add those kinds of I wouldn't say features but additions and content. That's what I love but about but that's what I love about the Steam community as a whole is the fact that the game has not released yet. Uh, the game releases tomorrow. So there's an entire universe to absorb and understand and learn to master. And they're already asking questions about the DLC. <laughs> they're already asking questions yeah, about what's you next. Were Whereas, done with the game. like Mike and the team, they're like, okay, we were done. You know, we're finished. We're releasing the game tomorrow. Congratulations! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we want to know about the DLC. <laughs> more, more. Give us more. But it's fair, though. I think. But I mean, I think it does. It does bring up an interesting point for is is how committed are you to this game are you going to release this game and move on to the next title or do you guys really have a future invested in dawn of andromeda and you might tell me well it, it all depends on how well it sells and that brings us closer to the ferrari but <laughs> no we're really planning regardless of sales we're going to do dlc or future updates one way or another okay i think the, the whole team is still really motivated to work on this I think I think part of the reason is because the development didn't take all that much time. It was two years for us. It's a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, it's only uh, there's games that take like five, six years. So everyone is still very much motivated to keep working on this and more stuff. Right. Yeah, Ariana. Well, that's really good. And do you have any plans for language expansion? Uh, yes, at least for now, we're we're planning on releasing uh, with uh, German and Russian languages, and then we'll see later down the line what makes sense. How's the how's the localization process for you guys? It's a bit tricky. I'll admit. How so? Uh, basically, we we need to make sure all the text can is, is extracted from the game. So the translation company can take that text, make it all make sense and in context, then we need to add it to the game. So it might seem simple, but it's really not. It's a lot of time, uh, a lot of headaches. Don't you wish there was a localization company that would just uh, send you a bunch of programmers, get into your game and translate it without you having to worry about it? Yeah, that will be perfect. Yes. Yeah. I think that's something for big companies. You can't afford it yet. Of course, of course. Um, I think, was that your last question, Ariana? Yep, that oh. was pretty much it on that. So. I want to know, yeah, I want to know about, I want to kind of feed off of, of that, Ariana, and get your feedback on early access, What's what, what that's been like for you. And you know what what have you guys learned from it and how much has the game been influenced by it um do you find that the the steam community really was instrumental if not influential in the development of the game and if so what have they done in terms of actual contribution stuff that's tangible oh absolutely they it was a huge help um they they report bugs they report balancing issues they even uh, suggest features like for example one in particular was that they felt there wasn't enough unit types unit classes so we added in a new titan uh, unit class which is a huge ship something that gives the game a lot of um, a good sense of scale you can see the small ships and then you see a titan okay you know this one is badass stay away yeah is that the planet killer <laughs> You can add the, the the ship part to to the Titan, yeah. Cool. And did you guys have I didn't like, quite make it that far? Did you guys have Sorry, one? Per, usually, like uh, people who do early, you know, in at least in our experience, you know, take it or leave it. People who do early access well have a person that's just the community manager, and his only purpose is to connect the stu the developers to the gamers, and he does that all day long. Um, I was talking to you about Starpoint Gemini, actually, who's uh, probably one of the most successful early access that we've come across, and they have the same publisher than you have. And it's, mm -hmm. run, it's run by a guy uh, whose name is Zeno, a great friend of Opinoobs, and he is just, you know, he's on it every day. And essentially, he's the guy who's shaping the game 
not from a coding standpoint, not from an artistic standpoint, but based on what the gamers want. Um, did you have someone like, you're a team of three, um, so it's a very small team and it's quite, it's quite extraordinary what you guys have been able to accomplish with such a small dev team. Usually when we see a team of three, the product is bare bones, they meant well, but it's just too small of a production to really, to really compete against the big stuff out there. I think what's most impressive about your game is the fact that you would have told me this is a 10 man team. I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have questioned your statement. Uh, it comes across as a big endeavor with, with a mid-sized studio behind it. Um, have you been able, considering there's only three of you, that get, I guess what I'm saying is that that gets me skeptical to some extent on your capacity to absorb the gaming community in, in the process of game development itself. Um, have you guys been, as, as, has it been easy for you guys to connect to, to connect to the players and their feedback and sort the bad from the good, keep the peace, keep the love, uh, mm -hmm. keep, your, keep your good players, your MVPs, your most valued player then trenched. Um, have you have you felt that connection? Has uh, early access been a huge success in your eyes, in your mind? Yeah, I feel so. I think the the main bridge between the the team and the the community, and well, replying to everyone and trying to to be as active as possible can be a little bit time consuming, but. The the idea to go to early access was precisely to to get as much feedback as we we could, and so it was really something that we need to go to do. And since I was the 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 programmer in the team, it basically went in some cases straight from uh, community design programming. It was there was no middleman, so that that makes the process a, a bit more uh, streamlined. I think. If I could jump in there, Fred, I wanted to say that while I was playing the game, I did look at the Steam community, and I've played a lot of Learn Access games, and being able to talk to the developers while it's going, and getting back on the game, and being there, here, I think as you uh, You're again, breaking up again, Ariana. <laughs> I, I can't catch you. Yeah. Oh, and you were going somewhere so solid with this. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. Next time, I'll leave the questions to you, Fred. I have well, I have two last questions. But Ray, you seem to be thinking about something right now. No, I've just been. It's been very insightful commentary from both of you. Yeah, it I has. have. I have two last questions that um, I always like to ask before we end the dev talk. The first one's the tough one. The second one is the happy Disney one. Um, what are you most unsatisfied about when it comes to, to the, 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 the current state of your game? What do you wish you had done better? That's a tricky question. Um, well, if you ask me, if I had infinite funds and infinite time, I will probably be working on this game for years maybe. But even even though we 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 had the time and the funds to do exactly what we wanted, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe more content. I think that's what I will I will do. Yeah, and there's got, not you've... something specific like this area that I feel needed more work or uh, this this area or these more races or something. Well, that's there great. really wasn't much. Yeah, and and you guys can bring in more content as as the community keeps growing. The second question, which you probably have understood already, is what are you proudest about? What what are you most satisfied about when it comes to the game? Hmm. That's tricky as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think the fact that we were capable of keeping the original direction we wanted to to follow and get to the end and see, okay, this is exactly what we wanted. Maybe even better in some aspects, thanks in, in part also to the community who really understood what we were trying to do. They, they helped basically shape the game in, I wouldn't say 
basically shape the game in the direction we wanted, if it makes sense. So I think that's probably the most, the thing I'm the most proud about. Okay, great. And, um, and a funky question, just because I like to ask him. Um, if you had a $20 million budget and <laughs> you had to take the studio to a whole new direction, meaning you had to ga not make a game in space, not make a 4X game, you just had to do your dream project, um, stepping outside of your comfort zone. Any idea what that would be? Ooh. Call of Duty 7. <laughs> <laughs> More like 17. <laughs> no Man's Sky 2, maybe. <laughs> no, it's, it's tricky. I have lots of big ideas I'd like to do at some point. Uh, You're in really this for life. Sorry? You're in game development for life. At least, at I least. hope so, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, we hope to see you. We hope to see you at the big conventions. I think you should be promoting the game hard, especially over there, um, in those places. And uh, Mike, want to say a big thank you for taking the time. We're gonna let you oh, go to yeah. sleep. Uh, we're gonna publish the interview if you've missed it on YouTube and iTunes, and of course on the website at opinups.com. I want to thank Ray, our editor in chief. I want to say say thanks to John Fentiman for putting those questions together. Ariana for getting uh, taking charge of the q a and of course laurie who's always backstage never to be seen but quite frankly um, all of this couldn't happen without her she's the one that really does all the pr with the studios get them on twitch and uh, and a lot more than that uh sending you all those free games in the chat and so forth uh thank you laurie we couldn't do this without you and still thank you to shane who even though he couldn't make it tonight <laughs> does a great job hosting our shows a much better job than i do um i want to say thanks mike again our best uh to no the problem. whole team uh, really best thank of you. luck in the, in this exciting launch tomorrow uh, we will be watching it close Anything we can do, if Ray, Ray, you know, Ray's the guy you want to talk to to get any, <laughs> anything written on the side from a review all the way to an inter a written version of the interview. He's the guy you got a nag, but uh, he usually tends to be pretty excited about that stuff. So without any further ado, we want to say thanks to our audience and everybody else. We'll see you next time. I don't know what next time is as far as dev talks go. But I do know that we've got a podcast cooking up uh, the Prey, AAA Anonymous episode 16, I think, of the game, the next release by Bethesda. That's exciting, Bethesda Softworks, and that's a studio I'm a huge fan of, uh, even though the games uh, always come out broken. The, the productivity at Opinoops tends to, like, just, just spiral down into a world of uh, nothingness when Bethesda releases, releases a game. I, mean, I still believe that Fallout 4 was a great game. Despite uh, despite all the pundits and, and the nasty feedback we've got, uh, it definitely got me hooked. It was my game of the year, what, two years ago, last year, I forget. Uh, so I'm excited to see what they do with Prey. We'll be talking about it. Oriana, I sure hope to see you on the podcast. Uh, it's, a, it's an exciting game. It's going to be on Sunday night, 9.30 p.m. Not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We'll advertise it on the website, opinups.com. Thank you, everyone, to making it. And until next time, see you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Mike.